Happy New Year. Welcome to the Public Works and Planning of January 4th in the year of 2022. Uh, I hope everybody had a great holiday, a safe and healthy holiday. And uh, I look forward to a great and productive year, another busy year in terms of this particular committee. Uh, do we have minutes to approve, Rachel? All right, I would like to call on uh, Vice Chair Steve Piercy. Chairman Cush, I have reviewed the minutes and find them in order and move for their approval. All right, thank you. So second. Motion and a second by Shanto. All those in favor signify aye. Aye. All right, that motion carries. Um, highway Department, yes. I'm sorry, say again? Yeah. We welcome your presence, Mr. Brooks. How did the uh, the six or seven inches of snow treat your department here the last few days? It was a little hectic. And are you ready for, I uh, think, another blast on Thursday evening, it sounds like? Remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to over, don't want to over, over project. Okay, I have a few things for you this, this evening. Uh, uh, actually, a few speed limit uh, changes and then our speed limits and then uh, a budget amendment. We'll start with the speed limits, if that's okay. Yep. Uh, we were recently approached about the speed limit on uh, Buckeye Road and in an effort for, you know, to, to have consistency out there, we went ahead and did all of that little area, which would include Buckeye Valley, East Buckeye Bottom, West Buckeye Bottom, and Joe Brown Road. You may also see, I don't know how you're, how you're, what you're looking at there, but you may also see Jurgen Road. That's a separate area, separate issue. So uh, we asked the Sheriff's Department for, the, for their recommendation on these, and after some back and forth, uh, we have 25 miles an hour. Over the most part, there is one area uh, where we're gonna have 35 miles an hour because the uh, road improves a little bit, and there's not as many horizontal and vertical curves, so. We felt like 25 was a little slow for that area. So this was approved at the road board this morning and I'm bringing it to you tonight for your, uh, your approval and consent to send it on to the full commission. We also have uh, Jurgen Road that we had, we had a request to look at Jurgen Road and we did that and we all consented that the sheriff's department as well. We all consented that, that 30 miles an hour was appropriate on that. That was approved as well this morning. Were these, are all five of these new postings or in or decreases to existing speed limit postings? Uh, have these ever been posted, I guess, before with speed limits? No, they have not. Okay, that answers the question. All right, any questions for Superintendent Brooks? If not, I'd like to have a motion to uh, motion to approve. Second to approve and a second by Mr. Blair. All those in favor? Aye. All right, that motion carries. Continue on. The next thing is a budget amendment. This is a, a budget amendment where we're moving uh, money around inside of our budget. We won't be uh, going to our fund ending balance. This is internal in the existing budget. We want to decrease our state aid projects. 68,726 is the line item and we wanna decrease it by 215,000 and then put that into our other contracted services and our crushed stone line items. This too was approved at the road board meeting this morning and uh, the the just kind of FYI, the line striping has increased from when we prepared our operating budget this year, it's over doubled. So that's what's going on with the other contracted services there while we were a little short in that department. So moved. Second. All right, any questions? All those in favor? No, this is roll call. Yeah, sorry, Rachel. Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. 
Mr. Serenio? Yes. Chairman Cush? Yes. Motion passed. All right. That's all I have for you this evening. All right, Greg, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Happy New Year. Yep. All right, Tanya, how about building codes report? And Happy New Year to you and your staff. Same to all of you. I did a big Greg Brooks, six foot tall. <laughs> Just dying a little bit. All right, so for the month of December, um, we had 20 working days in December and building codes issued a total of 264 permits. 65 of those were single family dwellings. And that is dying just a tiny bit from last month. However, it's dying significantly from this time last year. This time last year, we issued uh, just shy of 100 single family dwellings. And this month we did 65. So I don't really have an explanation for that. Doug might be able to enlighten us a little bit when he comes up to do the uh, available lot inventory. Um, I haven't really heard anything negative one way or another out there, except that it's winter and maybe things are just starting to slow down a little bit. Um, for a total revenue of 105,604, and we did a 1,730 inspections and drove a little better than 8,400 miles. And so if nobody has any questions on that, I will move on to development tax and school facilities tax. Everybody good? Yep. So school facilities tax in the month of December, we collected 396,926.50. And development tax, another 155,250. Both of which were up from last month. All right, and if we don't have any or questions on that, I will go on to zoning enforcement. And we had a 98 zoning enforcement inspections this month. Any, uh, any questions on those reports? I am working on a, um, an annual report, just a kind of recap of 2021, but didn't have enough time to get that out to you today. So I'll continue to work on that for next month. All right. Motion to approve the report, Motion to Mr. Approve Chairman. All, all the reports. And we have a second. All those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Tanya, what else do you have? That's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Doug, are you here? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope everybody had a happy and safe holiday season. Uh, to start our reports today, the first thing we'll discuss is the available lot inventory. Uh, you see that on your iPads. Our, our total, total available lots at the end of December, uh, 675. Uh, as you recall, those are lots that have been recorded and are ready for building permits as we speak. That is up just a little bit from last month, uh, not much. But uh, I've also included in your report in the folder, the uh, development tax versus the uh, school's facilities tax report. Uh, you'll notice that the, again, this development tax report, that number is gonna continue to go down. That went down about 30 or so lots from last month, whereas the school facilities tax actually went up. We had three larger plats that were recorded. Now that one, of course, is gonna fluctuate more as, as time goes on. That list will get larger. The other list, as those lots get used up and subdivisions get built out, will continue to uh, decline. Uh, for the development tax, but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of how the available lots are broken up right now. So you're looking at about 135 available lots under the school's facilities tax with the remaining 540 still under the development tax. 
As far as any words of wisdom as to why things slowed down this year or so much as compared to last year, honestly, I, I really wish I could give you a little bit more, but I can't. Uh, I think one of the factors that's really starting to play a role is just uh, availability of materials, uh, affordability of those materials at the same time. Uh, I know that's, that's playing a, a large factor in, in, into a lot of this, but that's about all I've got at this point. So. If there's no other questions about that report, I will go ahead and jump into our rezoning report. Uh, the Planning Commission considered two rezoning requests last month, uh, one, one along Weekly Lane, one along Franklin Road. Uh, the one along Weekly Lane was recommended for denial. The applicant subsequently uh, withdrew his application. Uh, he's actually in negotiations with one of the uh, neighboring property owners to possibly buy the property. So he asked for his to just be withdrawn. In, in its entirety. So the only one we'll be looking at is the one located along Franklin Road. Uh, information provided by the applicant states they would like to rezone this subject property to office professional to allow for a pest control type business. Uh, there's additional information I've attached with your uh, staff report today. Uh, the applicant actually rezoned two other properties along Franklin Road back in 2009, similar to what he's wanting to do with this property. And he also included a concept plan to give you an idea of what he's uh, looking to do. Access, of course, would be along Franklin Road. Uh, the concept plan does show the existing house being converted into office space with parking in the back. Of course, this is conceptual plan. This isn't the a plan development, so he's not locked into the concept plan. If this is approved, everything dealing with access and parking, landscaping and screening and performance standards, of course, would abide by the regulations in the zoning ordinance. Uh, the applicant answered several questions about the operation of his business, primarily about employee and customer traffic. Uh, the Planning Commission asked staff about their feelings on the application. We had recommended neutral because with most applications we can usually see positive and negative aspects. However, I did say that uh, we were more comfortable with the office professional zoning because it's more of a limited zone. You don't see as much of the retail type traffic in that kind of a zone. And based on his track record with the other properties, uh, I feel that he'll perform the same as he's done with those. So after discussion, the Planning Commission did recommend approval by a unanimous vote. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> any questions for Doug? Yeah, sure, Wayne. Did I miss that there's other office type on that on that street right uh, there? In that, on that side of the road, not so much. Uh, now across the street, uh, just down from it, going toward Veterans Parkway, the city's annex property on the north side, which is zoned for commercial purposes. Uh, the office, there's more office zoning when you go more to the east. Uh, he, he zoned a couple properties that way, a couple miles down the road back in 2009. That, that's probably what you heard me referring to. But on this side of the road, it'll be the first one, but there are, are other commercially zoned properties in the area. And there wasn't a, a, a there was a no opposition. No one spoke against it at the wow. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got a phone call from uh, somebody that owns property. It was either right next or right in the vicinity of where the property is, and he was all for it. So. Anything else? You may. It has nothing to do with this. Okay. I'm very curious. I got a call about how. How are we doing as far as rural areas, county development? Has that increased a lot more or is it just mostly in city limits? Uh, I mean, we're, I, I guess- Talking about outside the city. Outside the city. Oh, well, I mean, you can see from the building permit reports, I mean, development in the unincorporated areas, I guess, is that what you mean when you say rural? Well, the reason uh, I'm asking this is because a lot of that land out there is rocky. Yeah. And so I would assume there are people are wanting to do a step system a lot of that steps of what we say yes sir and then my question is this if it is a step system what's the minimum acreage that they need for a house to build out for it and i'm talking about a subdivision mm -hmm. well depending on the zoning of the property of course if they're looking to do like what would be considered a conventional rm subdivision residential medium density they would have to have at least fifteen thousand square feet on the lots themselves now, my understanding from CUD uh, is that, of course, you know, they own and maintain the systems for the, the step systems. Uh, it's not feasible for them to lay out what they need to do for maintenance and whatnot. 
if the subdivision is going to be less than 60 lots. So we'll have people call in occasionally that will say, hey, there's a, a piece of property here. It's about 20 acres in size or something like that. Uh, it could probably handle about 20 or 30 homes. Can I put a step system on it? I said, well, you need to talk with CUD, but my understanding is they need more of a yield before they'll really look into that. So they'd be stuck with conventional septic at that point, which they may or may not be able to get the same amount of yield. It's difficult to give you a, a direct answer to your question because depending on the soil types and the type of development they want to do, it can vary. It, they, you're looking at larger tracts of land, of course, but uh, you know, if you have good soil, your step system doesn't have to be quite as, quite as large to accommodate the same number of houses, but if your soil is more marginal, you would need more of it. So you know, if you have a 100-acre tract of land with good soil, you may be able to get away with 20 to 30 acres of a step system, depending on the number of units you want. If it's marginal soil, you may have to get 40, 50 acres to make it so that you can actually build houses. And so that's going to cut down your, your housing yield. Yeah. That, I mean, that's kind of a roundabout way of answering your question. I hope no, that I'm just trying you. to get an understanding of somebody who's buying a large tract of land. Mm -hmm. It's rocky. Mm -hmm. What do they assume that they, you know, with step system, is it a minimum one acre lot or? It, no, it, yeah. That's pretty small. Uh, right. Well, and that depends on the zoning of the property or if they're asking for a rezoning to like a PUD. You know, we've seen some of those planned developments that have, you know, 7,000 to 10,000 square foot lots. A lot of the times they're trying to make up for the yield they're losing because of the fact that the soils out there may not be very good. It might be more rocky terrain like you're talking about. Uh, but and I've had this conversation with people where, you know, step systems don't magically create soil, you know, because I've talked to some people that'll say, well, uh, I know there's not much soil on there, but I want to do a step system. I'm like, well, that's not going to help you any. You have to have the soil in place to actually do the step system. So, you know, there's a little bit of misconception with that among some people I've talked with. So, so to answer that question, Doug, if it's if it's a real rocky site, about you can. For rule of thumb, half of it may be taken away by septic. That's field. a fairly decent step, rule of thumb. Step, yeah. Yeah. What I usually tell people as well is generally in the in the unincorporated areas, when we look at our subdivisions, of course the zoning, especially the RM zoning, for the fifteen thousand square foot lots. In theory, you could get about three units an acre. Obviously, we're never going to get that. Uh, most of the subdivisions that we see in that regard, you're looking at basically one to one and a half units per acre. So if somebody comes in and says, I got 100 acres of land, uh, what do you think my housing yield's going to be? I'll say generally you're looking probably at 100 to 150 lots, just because that's typically what we see, just looking at some of the historical subdivisions we've looked at, that we've approved in the past. Robert? I don't know what it is. Y'all keep bringing up some of my pet peeves <laughs> when we start discussing this, and uh, step system happens to be one of them. And what my pet peeve is, you've got a developer of that out there that's developing the property, and I don't have a problem with that, and I don't have a problem with them using a step system. My problem with the step system is how it's used. If you look all over the United States, these step systems have been out there, sand filtration systems, for a long time. There's documentation from Washington State down to, I don't know about Florida, but I've read of different states. And in almost all cases, the land that the drip field is actually on is utilized instead of just them mowing it. Uh, they're using it for parks. They're using it to graze animals. And to me, we're wasting a valuable asset by allowing CUD to continue to keep this property and not be utilized for our citizens, especially the ones living in those areas that surround it. And that could be more green space if they would allow that. And what I would charge you guys on planning to do is look at that and see if there's something we can do to say, hey, Y'all need to look at this and let's start using this as expanded green space for playgrounds, for walking trails, for soccer fields. And the other thing that I see and I have a problem with in heartburn is all this property has been deeded to CUD. Now, I don't have a problem with CUD making money because they're providing a service, but I don't know that they need to own that property. You know, in years to come, what's going to happen where eventually we'll have sewer in a lot of these places 
and what happens to that property after sewer comes in okay but i would look at how those are being used you know like i said they can be used for recreational purposes and they should be you know every time we've had a uh, planning session similar to what we had about a month or two ago a long-range plans i've brought that up and i've yet to hear these guys mention it so I'd like for y'all to look at that please great point and we will i don't know if this is a time and the place to, to ask this question but with what chairman p just brought up we have several schools that have large step systems attached to them could uh, some of that property possibly be used for a recreational area like a soccer field and utilize what we're using for the recreation for uh, for some additions to these facilities and I'm just, I'm just wondering because in a school system how many how many acres would a step system go ahead mr. Chairman. well what I was going to say you know these aren't conventional drip fills like you have in a sewer at home, normal yeah. sewer the water that's going in those drip fills is purer than the water that's in stones river it's already been run through uh, purifiers and you could drink that water just the thought of it i don't like that but like i said it's clearer than what you're getting in the stones river discharge and uh that's why i say I don't see that there was a problem. I say some kid got rowdy and, and did get down in the line. I don't think it'd take very much to throw a little bit of dirt back over that line, especially when you're talking about water that is not uh, got contaminants in it. Mm -hmm. well, that's why I say, yeah, I think it'd be a good idea for the school system to look at that and utilize those, those fields. You know, now, terrain and slope and things like that, that have a lot to do with what's going on too. You know, you'd have to have it engineered but like I said, it's clean water. All good questions that we'll explore in planning. All right, uh, we need a motion for Doug's uh, report. Motion to approve his report. And a second. All those in favor? All right, Doug, what else? That's all I got. got, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we have solid waste next. Uh, for those of you who don't know or haven't heard, uh, Bishop is not here tonight. He has been exposed um, as half, mainly half of his staff is, is out with COVID. So there's been a uh, bottleneck at the convenience centers to say the least. Uh, Haley Road was closed down today, right? Uh, so the mayor will give uh, uh, the solid waste report, and then we can ask the mayor questions. So, Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, again, Bishop called. He wanted to know if he, we wanted him to come, and I said, well, since you've been exposed, I'd prefer you not to, uh, to, to attend tonight's meeting. Uh, things are on track. Uh, I believe maintenance will be finishing this week with his new office at the landfill. Um, he'll be moving upstairs of that building where the garage is and be moving the whole operation out there. there are, he is working uh, with Middle Tennessee Electric to get um, electrical panels to where they can plug in the trucks who have diesels and they'll need to glow plugs be able to, to um, heat those motors um, uh, when uh, when it freezes so they're in the process of getting that done but I think this is going to be a good move for them um, many of them are excited about it uh, all being out there at the same location at the landfill I think it's a good move on on their behalf um, outside of that I I know we uh, we've been overwhelmed uh, each one of the convenience centers has been overwhelmed because of the holiday season uh, with corrugated cardboard and everything coming from Christmas. And uh, he's he's uh, scrambling. I, I said this was a tough time for you to come on board and, and uh, everything that's going on, not only between COVID, but also with the Christmas season upon you. So he's uh, I think he's doing a good job uh, up to this point. We'll, 
we'll uh, we'll continue to to monitor that progress. But he he gets up excited about going to work every morning, which is good. Uh, as far as he did not convey to me how much tonnage, et cetera, that that um, we've been taking in, but I'm sure it was more than usual with the December numbers. Is Are they on SharePoint? Yeah. Okay, it's so it should yeah. be on your SharePoint. Uh, the tonnage that we took in in comparison to to the last month. Uh, I believe that uh, we are prepared for um, pre pre bid hearing, and I think we'll hear from Mr. Bradley here in a little bit. He's on the calendar, but we've got pre bid um, meeting scheduled on the 13th, and then on the 20th. Planning, I mean, purchasing committee will be opening the bids. We had somebody come came by today and picked up uh, specs. Uh, probably have eight or nine different companies that'll be putting bids in on the four um, convenience centers that will be uh, two will be remodeling and two will actually be moving. Um, Rockvale and Leanna will be remodeling weekly and Walter Hill will be actually moving to new locations. So uh, we're, we're kind of excited about that opportunity and, and finally getting that going. Um, any questions? I will say, uh, Mr. Chairman, I shared with you right before the meeting, did get a phone call from uh, from Pratt Recycling, uh, the um, general manager with Pratt. They've been out and looked at the 20 acres that we have on uh, Singer Road and Florence Road. Uh, they're excited about uh, sitting down with us and they asked for a few more bullet points, which I sent over to Mike Hughes today that they needed to get a topographical map. They wanted to um, get some information one will be the title they want to see that there was a clean title on it I'll, I'll get that from our attorney from where we purchased it a few years ago under the last administration and um, it after that I think it's just sitting down and, and um, uh, negotiating with them I think it's now time to call in the other mayors mr. chairman and and uh, let's sit down and see who's in who's not um, on uh, recycling and uh, see where we go from there. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, I did get some calls about weekly, which happens every year because of the yes, holidays. Uh, one lady asked about the other locations, and I, I told her that she could go on to Rutherford County and, uh, and pick them up, and she said, well, the only thing she saw was weekly and, uh, and the uh, recycling place in Laverne where uh, for the TVs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I got on my computer and, and started looking and it was it was a tad bit confusing as to finding just a solid list of all of our convenience center. Uh, I didn't I didn't find a solid list myself, but I'm not that technologically savvy either. Is there is there a spot where there they can go to to find every to, uh, every location simply. you know commissioner that's a that's a real good point matter of fact i asked rachel to set a meeting up today between ashley and with uh, cody over at it i think there needs to be some communication between uh, those two as to who's doing what there's some finger pointing between the two i think we ended up taking the position that megan used to have who did the our website but we, we, we there's a lot to that can be done to improve our website and make it more user friendly, especially if, and if, if we're gonna start educating the public of, of recycling and how to do things, we, we need to make it easy and how to go to, what the hours are, what you accept, you know, at each one of the convenience centers, all that information needs to be on that website. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner, that's a good point. Um, Mayor, the uh, you know in the paper there's been discussion about TDEC now putting um, the Republic landfill expansion back to the regional solid waste board. 
that that so is correct. Is there a meeting been set yet for that, or do you know? It's a it's a tentative. They're kicking around. Uh, not a definite date yet, but um, I think it, it kicks back to them. Um, I talked to Miss Barrett today, and it will come back to the Solid Waste Regional Board uh, from the judge. Uh, the judge is kicking it back to them, and then they will end up um, making a determination at their next meeting. Okay. All right. But. Mr. Chair, I, I did ask a question about going to T deck, and I believe that that it because it went to the judge because of the action taken, it won't be going to T deck anytime soon. It'll come back to the regional board, uh, so it won't go on for a hearing because the um, the judge ruled the chancellor ruled on behalf of the the solid waste regional board, not on behalf of Republic. So he put it back in their laps to, to make a decision. So their, uh, Republic is not getting granted their uh, request for expansion of the footprint. Yes, sir. Chairman Harris. One of, uh, a few, a couple months ago, three months ago, I asked that we look into dissolving the regional board. Yes, sir. And having our own board and do you feel that this is exactly why we should have our own board? Uh, I, I do, um, but I, I talked to Ms. Barrett about that and, and asked them, uh, ask her to put it on their calendar to bring that up. We may, she felt it was best until we got through this process to, to operate with the existing board. And then, but I said, why can't we simultaneously go through the steps and at least find out what would be required for us to operate independently. You know, the other three counties may not want to continue with us since they're taking their trash to Bledsoe, not, not Bledsoe, but above Bradley, whatever county that is, where they're taking their trash, I believe, from their transfer station in Manchester. But I, I think we need to proceed ahead and at least let this committee see what it would take for for us to be independent well to my understanding it takes a year so i mean i think this body needs to we need to come up and and address the question whether we want to do something like that well and because i mean it's, it's going to take a whole year to do it that's where it starts with this committee uh, i know we inquired about it but it, uh, we didn't have a formal motion to send on to the full commission and say yes we want to be independent i think that would that would be stronger uh to give marching orders if that's the case yeah i'd like i would love for us to have this on our agenda next month just so we can discuss this okay because i mean you know i'm just one person but i just feel like that with with the growth that you know the rutherford county has i don't feel like counties that don't even have anything to do with the landfill is making decisions that could cost us millions of dollars uh, yeah look, we did talk about this a couple of months ago um and i talked to becky becky said yeah it would take about a year year and a half there's a, tons of paperwork to file uh and that uh if we wanted to do that you know just let her know she she could give us an estimate on what it would take or whoever we wanted to try and do that legwork for us uh, i'm sure she's not the only one but uh well chairman i just like to know how these other how the other commissioners on this committee feels about that because you know it's it's if i'm a one-man gang then it's not going anywhere yeah you know yeah. i mean if if you know i don't know how you commissioners feel about that i think this is i'm trying to be foresightful and see things down the road i mean you none of you in here can deny that we're growing at an unbelievable pace and that we're able to be self-sufficient without other counties and I'm, I'm letting you all know that according to state law one county can be a regional board so it's not like we got to have six different counties one county can be that and that means us so however you know i don't want to make a motion because i don't know where you guys feel about this but i do want this matter to be brought up and i'd like it to be discussed if you feel like it and i'm humbly asking i'm not telling anything yeah. i'm just yeah. humbly asking well 
uh, I'll give my opinion. It's and it's just an opinion. Um, I I think long term the right thing to do is be self sufficient, right? Uh, for reasons you just said. So I'm, I'm willing to move forward and and see what it would cost and get the and get that paperwork going in in a year or whatever it takes to have that done. Um, the, the flip side is the counties that we're currently engaged with have been very supportive to our needs and wants because uh, we're, you know, we're kind of the biggest elephant in that room when it comes to uh, we have the we have the landfill in our county, so they respect that and have voted kind of in the direction we have needed them to vote on things. So for that aspect, it's run fairly smoothly. But who's to say that under different leadership in different elections, it may not be that run so smoothly. So. For that reason, I would say having us to stand independently, we can set our own destiny and not have any surprises with a regional, a, mul a multi-county board. So that would be my opinion. I I'm, I'm happy with the way it's worked till now, but who's to say, like I said, under new, a new regime in some other county, it might not be so smooth. Wayne. Mr. Chairman, when we talked about this a couple of months ago, I, I kind of got a feeling from the committee, whether correct or not, that we were of a consensus that we would want to be self-determining. So I, I, I found it to be a, a positive uh, response at that time. Uh, of course, I know we can look back in the minutes and see what was said, but but at this point, I would I would think I would would want us to be self-determining as well. Robert? Seems like I recall, Mac, we, when we discussed this before, as Commissioner Blair was saying, seems like he mentioned a county that had applied and it was like two and a half years and they still hadn't got it. It was right. down in Savannah. That was in Savannah, Tennessee. Tennessee that he was talking about. But I think politics got in the way of those because they're all there were several counties involved as well and more than what we have because they're much smaller counties and there's like eight or nine counties all involved in that regional solid waste authority down there um, it, and, and keep in mind that if, if we are going to go that way it may take even longer because nobody's ever done this um, since legislation created uh, these solid waste authorities back in 1992 maybe um, they've been created, but as far as successfully uh, separating and creating a new one, um, I know it's being attempted down in Savannah, but uh, if that's the direction, it may take a little bit longer because I don't think there's anybody at TDAC that was there back in the 90s. Well, at, the reason I brought that up is, is time. You know, if, if we think we can ask for it and get it next month, that's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. No, right. From from what I'm getting at, and, and I think Commissioner Harris has got a good idea. I mean, I think we need to be our own decision makers and not let someone else make yeah. that decision for us. But having said that, I want to bring something else up along the same lines here. Okay, this is a bit of a curve. I'm sorry, Craig, but. You mentioned Pratt earlier and then getting with the mayors and making a decision and I don't know about the rest of you here. We've, we've been working on this for a long time, but the way I envision this is us making some recommendations and then the mayors all getting together and saying, well, we think this is good. Here's something we can all agree on or not. And as I thought about it, uh, one thing that keeps coming up is in my mind, is okay let's put out a plan here's plan a here's plan b can we have a public referendum on what we decide you know we can say here's our options 
and have a referendum. And I want to know if we can legally have a referendum. Uh, that's something, you know, our state legislators can probably answer for us. If not, they can ask. Uh, that's a real good get question. That answer. That's a real good question for tomorrow night. Uh, that could be asked and, and let their legal department go back and, and find that out. Um, but I, I like that's that's a great idea. Well, I, I, there are a lot of smart people in this county, and I'm not talking about anybody sitting in this room in particular, although th there are a lot of smart people on this commission and a lot of them that I'm really proud to be associated with. But I think the more people we get involved, especially if we have a public referendum, we can say this is what's best for us. I recall Chairman P when I carried the legislation on wine and grocery stores, I, I carried that bill for eight years and the lobbyist got involved on both sides for and against and everybody made money off of it, but the bill never would progress until I came back on the eighth year and rewrote the legislation that said, well, let's let each community decide. And when that happened, it was over 80% uh, of those who qualified based on the population. So the, the more opportunity, especially on something as important as solid waste and what to do with it, if you can present and educate and then have buy-in from your citizens, I think it's a great idea. You'll have a better chance of passing it, and at least you won't have all the naysayers because 75 or 65 or 85 percent of the people voted this is the direction we want to go. So I, that's a good question for tomorrow night, Chairman Harris. And you know, there's going to be a whatever we do, there's going to be a cost. So they, sure, a lot of people would say, let let's let the citizens decide if. We, we, we'd be willing to fund that, I believe. I know, I know speaking for one vote on budget, I would definitely be willing to, to fund a, a referendum if it was called for. you have a comment, Craig? Not on that. Um, but I do, I want to make a motion. All right. I'd like to make a motion to allow Chairman Cush and the mayor to begin paperwork to create in our own board for regional representation. Second. Second, second part. Second. Bill Dodd. All those, yes. Just, I, I wanna make a comment about this and I, I, I've already said, I agree with Chairman Harris here that, you know, it's best if we do that. But what you said earlier about this board, you know, this board, the other counties, I think have been over backwards to try to work with us and I've been pleased with what I've seen from them. And I don't want this to reflect on any of those counties that have supported us in our endeavors to think that, you know, we don't trust them, we don't like them or whatever their decisions. That's not the case. Right. You know, it's just a case of us doing it for ourselves. Well, uh, can I respond? Yeah, yeah. I don't, <laughs> Commissioner P, I don't know, uh, I am not, this ain't got nothing to do with other counties as far as do I, you know, don't trust them or whatever. This has to do with the fact that there's 12 to 13 votes and we have four. And we talked about, you just said, this landfill is in Rutherford County and we're making decisions landfill and two or three of these counties don't have nothing to do with the landfill. They don't deliver trash here. They don't have anything in that, you know, uh, regards to that so this has nothing to do with the counties i do i had no problem whatsoever with any of these counties i just think that it's time for rutherford county to start looking in the future and be self-sufficient and we're big enough right now that we can handle our own board with the cities municipalities with chairmen i mean we have we know we all have an idea how to do this it's not something that we're going in there it's going to flip a you know coin we know how we can do this and we had the people to do it. It's time, that's why I'm saying it has nothing to do with the counties. So I don't, it's not a slap at any of them. This is strictly us being self-sufficient and start taking matters into our own hands. Which is, we're responsible for that. Steve? For the mayor, did you not 
make the comment that Miss Barrett recommended to wait on any decision like this? Yeah. Uh, um, yes, Commissioner. She didn't make that comment, but you know she's on that board, and but I don't. I personally don't see us running simultaneous tracks on this and let them continue to do what they're doing. We give them their full support and we can start doing some legwork behind the scenes to see what it's going to take because because they'll be making a decision sometime in the spring, let's just say in the next 90 days, I would say. But it, if it's going to take over a year and a half for us to, to move in that direction, but we need to be prepared instead of starting after they, they finish it. That's just the way I see it. Rather than take the chance of jeopardizing their decision, like Mr. Harris said, there's three other counties, they don't bring trash down here, so why would they really be concerned what happened? I would recommend waiting the 90 days rather than jeopardize our faith with the other three counties. Because just to put it, I can't put it politi politically correct we're a lot larger than the other three and we're kind of different about as far as I can go there uh, I'd really love to see it put off you know uh, I, the last thing we need to do is jeopardize what we've got going now and if the judge has sent it back to that committee and they look at it and they say hey we've seen where Rutherford County's want to jump out of this committee we we'll just jump out too. let them do whatever they want to with the expansion wouldn't be a good situation but that's just my thoughts I'm for what you're wanting to do I think it needs to wait until they make their decision that the judge sent back to them what would it hurt 90 days said another way you just want to let sleeping dogs lie for a minute until the heat till the heat's off right there's no need to stir in a pot that's cooking in your direction. Well, first of all, if we started today, started today, right now, and everything goes our way, we're still looking at a minimum of 12 months. Nothing we can do, that is in the, that's in the law. It's 12 months. And it could be longer than that. So I don't think our actions tonight is going to jeopardize or influence anything that happens within the next 90 days of this board meeting or the next 60 days, 180 days, or 360 days. That board will be able to react on this and we can still have exactly what Commissioner Pierce is uh, talking about and we go ahead and start making arrangements for us to go in our own direction. I do not see us in any way jeopardizing the decision of the regional board that's coming up within the near future. But I don't see why we need to delay this in any capacity whatsoever and then we should go forward with it. Because I'm telling you, minimum of a, of a year, and that's if everything goes good. And it could be longer than that. But I think it's time that we start going in that direction. Anybody else have strong feelings? Just that. Um that our mentality needs to be that it's an exploratory uh, endeavor at this point. And it's just because of our size and our desire to be self-determining that we're looking for at that avenue down the road. And uh, if that conversation comes up uh, between in the, in the board there that our representatives could explain that this is just something that we're exploring at this time. Could, Mr. Chairman, could you take maybe some of the, deflect some of that off by asking our delegation tomorrow night? Um, I, th I think if we task them and ask them to do it uh, on our behalf, uh, they have a, 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 a quite, um, a very robust legal department for the legislature. And I think that uh, their legal department working with TDEC's legal department, it could um, uh, help expedite getting that information uh, intergovernment to intergovernment departments compared to, uh, and no charge to us, we just ask our delegation to, to 
ferret that out and tell us what what it's going to take. We sent across the street. Um, our our attorney firm is by the hour, and they start um, they start from ground zero without any questions of where to ask. Whereas you have attorneys who work for the legislature who specialize in environment and they can talk to the other attorneys at T deck um, uh, to start pulling all the code and, and et cetera to let us know wh where how we need to proceed. But one of the things I think that I would also put that in that motion. I'd put that in your motion if if one thing I also so. need to explain is for this to happen, there has to be a resolution from the other counties that are willing to step out of this. So they would have to have resolutions as well. They have to have resolutions. So this is a process that's going to take a while. Yeah, because they have I don't to join. see them do anything to stop that, yeah. but I'm just saying it takes a while to do that. We know how local government works. I will be dealing with six, seven other different counties. So I think this process will take longer. And I think the, 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 the decision concerning the landfill by the regional board will happen way before this would even become, you know, for us to have a full vote on it. So I don't see no reason why we don't start this process. And also, got gentlemen, you also have the power to vote this down if you don't want to do this when we get there. So if it gets to the point and you're feeling uncomfortable about it or anything, it still has to be approved by the by the full body. But this doesn't. There's no. I don't see why we couldn't go ahead and start this process and get it going. Because I'm not talking about any other county. I'm talking about self-sufficiency, self-determination. That's a great word, Wayne. Exactly where I think we need to go with this. We have a motion, and I believe we have a second by Phil on your original motion. Would you? Would you be inclined to amend your emotion to add the verbiage that the mayor talked about, about asking the state legislative group to have the state's attorneys look into that and perhaps foot the bill for that venture as opposed to our county attorney to do that? State attorneys were used when it was created and force fed into us back in the 90s so why not let those attorneys figure this out for us so you're saying that you y'all feel that we should add the verbiage to let the state attorney I, no not our, well the legislative attorneys so they you know it's different from the attorney general's office so the attorneys who work for the General Assembly, if our, if our legislators, when we talk to them tomorrow night, we ask them uh, to find out this information on our behalf, and they collectively go together and call in the attorneys who work for them to work with the attorneys over at TDEC, collectively give them until end of session, you know, which will be end of April, 1st of May. Uh, to come back with uh, to us, it may take a while because it's not the only thing they're challenged with. Otherwise, we're going to probably go over to Nick's office. Not that I don't want to pay him, but he's going to start from scratch, trying to figure out researching and going all the way back to the '90s and looking at minutes because this has never been done. You see what I'm saying, Mr. Chairman? Didn't we give the mayor that authority with? You and the mayor that authority with Chairman uh, Harris's. I mean, he his motion, if I recall, was to give. give authority to you and the mayor to start this exploratory process. Could that not include That's doing exactly what the mayor is saying? Well, it, <laughs> now he and I have been on a conference call talking to our legislators one-on-one, -on -one, it's not gonna have the same effect. If you come to them tomorrow night and say, this is a, a high priority for us, collectively, now which one of you guys sitting up here are willing to take this and, and help maybe collectively all of you do it? That's how I would approach it if I were still in the, in the General Assembly. I understand that, but it doesn't necessarily say, it, it's, the law says we have the authority to do this. But, 
we're, we're looking for we're, we're looking for, for free legal advice. Correct. <laughs> they can, we can always we can always go to Plan B and do it in house or hire Becky. But if we can save a hundred grand and let the state do it, that's what I think the mayor's pushing for. I can repeat your motion, which is. Motion for Chairman Cush and Mayor Ketron to begin the process for Rutherford County to create its own solid waste authority. Okay, well, I'll be here tomorrow night. And if you want me to, I'll ask on behalf of you all uh, if they're willing to do that and which one's gonna take the lead. Because otherwise they're gonna go back and get in their own committees when they start back in the session next week. And we get to the end of May and they adjourn, sign and die, and go home, and nobody's done anything. And then we're back to square one, going to our attorney across the street and saying, "Okay, we want you to start digging into this and find out what it's going to take for us to do this." Well, I mean, I've talked to the county attorney. I think he is already dug into this, and he's given me an email to what we had to do. But part, I mean, mostly is we got to file work and file paperwork to start this process. So that's what I'm asking about. Okay. I don't, I, I understand where you're coming from. I'm trying to understand. I'm not totally there yet, but okay. when I'm kind of lost. Come, come down to my office and I'll show you the the invoices I got from the attorney's office that I signed today, you know, by the hour that we're paying for every, every time we ask a question. I'm just looking for free legal help from our legislative delegation because it is a state issue, you know, of how we get at it. They're the ones that created it. I. You all tell me what to do, and I'll be happy to do that. In 24 hours, we can ask the question. And it's easier to look somebody in the eye and ask the question, and they have to give an answer. So in 24 hours, we'll have some clear direction on whether they say, sorry, yeah. ma'am, we're not interested. Or, Tomorrow night, we'll know. Yeah, so I, I, we need 24 hours. So I, I think we can vote on your motion as is, We'll still ask the question tomorrow, and if we get nowhere with it, we still have other options to explore with Becky or somebody else, with our own in-house attorney or going out to an environmental somebody. Well, I agree with you and the mayor. I mean, I agree what we're yeah. trying to do here. I understand what you're yeah. trying to do here. I'm just simply saying we should get this process going. That doesn't take anything to get it going to file paperwork or, or you know look at I mean would you agree I mean yeah I'll address the delegates tomorrow on my meeting with them on this and I think the question I'm going to ask is can you look at helping this county expedite expedite to let us know how we can form our own regional board that sound yes sir and and ask them which one's willing to take the lead yeah. they'll all nod and go yeah yep yeah. And we'll, then, we'll help you. And then it'll be over. <laughs> It'll be asking that same question this time next year. Well, I remember, I, I, I only remember because Chairman I've been Cush there, okay? asked a question. I, 16 years of playing that game, I, I know how they do. Well, I know my first year we asked them about impact fees. And it took three and a half years to get that done. So okay. I understand where you're coming from, but also, you know, I, I, I got to look forward. I can't look backwards. That's what we're doing here. Yeah. We have a motion, Mr. Chairman. Yes. You're, you're, I think we still have comments. Steve? I'm going to ask y'all one more time to put this off for 90 days. There's three other counties in this other than us. Is that not right? Yes. Other than six or seven, and they're just four and all? To my recollection, there's four. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you the last time to put it off for 90 days and I'm going to request a roll call vote on this decision because if it goes the wrong way it's going to be bad on me and my district because we sit on the landfill that's all I've got to say about it all right. I'm not against the idea I'm against the hasty of moving it before they make their next decision which we think well, could be in April or May. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Yes, Chairman P. I I tend to want to go ahead and vote on this, but I think what 
Mr. Piercy is saying has got some merit. And so I'm gonna offer an amendment that we have the mayor go ahead and talk to the delegation, but to not instigate the move for 90 days. That's a amendment to his motion. Well, He's wanting to say, go, uh, the way I understand this motion is to go ahead and file the paperwork tomorrow or whenever. And what I, my amendment would say is let's wait 90 days before we actually amend it. I think we can go ahead and ask the delegation if they can pick it up and go with it. But as far as filing paperwork, wait 90 days. Okay. All right. Um, so do we refresh my memory? Do we need a, a you'd have made to have the a amendment. second. So we needed a second to hit that amendment. Okay, we have a, you've seconded his amendment, his, no, okay. We need a, Steve, Steve has a second to that amendment. All right, so let's vote on the amendment. I mean, may I, may I have a question yes, of clarity, yes, Mr. Yes. Chairman? I need Again, a I, I guess I've become perplexed in the difference in what Chairman Harris has asked and what the mayor explained because when with his motion to start the process, I thought, <clears throat> again, let me refer back to my verbiage, was that it was an exploratory rather than an actual filing of any paperwork at, that, at this time. Was, was, am I mistaken in that uh, understanding? Motion is for the mayor and the chairman to begin process of looking in for us to, to start our own board. But there's a difference between looking into the process and actually beginning the process. So is your motion it's beginning. to, I'm to begin? beginning because looking at a long period of time here and like the mayor just said, you know, when I asked the delegates tomorrow about this, you've been on this commission long enough to know it's gonna take a long time. And I understand where Mr. Pierce is coming from, but I don't think 90 days is gonna do anything because it's not, nothing's gonna happen in the next 360 days if everything goes well. So I don't necessarily know. I think what Mr. Piercy is, and, and Steve, I might be wrong and you correct me, is he's basically what he's saying is he's trying to not have the impression that we're totally against the regional board. I think that's what he, is that what you're kind of? That's exactly right. It doesn't matter what you do here tonight toward this, they're going to know. If you wait 90 days and start, it would just be so much better. But, you know, I'm just one vote, and I can't sway this one way or the other. But I'm trying to get you to see you're dealing with different situations right there, different. Okay. Read the amendment, please. Say that one more time, Phil. The secretary to read the amendment. Thank you. Commissioner Pay, you had requested for to allow Mayor Kitchen to go ahead and discuss with the delegates tomorrow night, but to wait 90 days before we file any sort of documents. Okay. So let me make sure I'm clear. And I apologize for not being on top of this. We're voting on the original amendment, or the original, um, yeah, no, I'm sorry, the original, the original motion. We're going to amend, no. no, amendment first. The amendment first, okay. Thank you. We're voting on Commissioner P's amendment. So all those in favor, oh, you want a roll call on that, or? He, he requested a roll call, I thought, on the original motion, but I don't know. Okay, all those in favor of the amendment to the motion signify aye. aye. Any opposed? Nay. Okay. Okay, just a second. Now, are we ready to vote on the original amendment? The amendment did pass. The, 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 yes, I'm sorry. The Thank amendment you. passed. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, would you like a roll call on this, Steve? Okay, roll call, roll call on the original amendment. 
Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? No. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Serenio? Yes. Chairman Cush? No. All right, that motion passes. Um, and so tomorrow night we will ask the delegation to see uh, if they would assist us in uh, uh, some legal help. Um, and the mayor and I will uh, go ahead and, and investigate uh, a, a detach uh, possibilities. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I seconded the original motion and I voted yes on both of those for the very reason to get to spur this thing, to get it started. And if we find there are any of this move is detrimental to the other counties, then I will relook at our ultimate decision. If it's detrimental to the other counties, that could change my ultimate vote. But so I just want to make that clear. Can you show that in the minutes? Yes. All right, thank you. Do you have anything else for the solid waste report? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Jay, do you have any updates you'd like to give us? Well. Do we need to vote on this? Yes, sir. Okay. We do have, we do have, before you come up, if you're coming up, Jay, we have one more budget item we need to uh, uh, do in regarding to, uh, that actually what? involves Jay. You got item, item number seven. Uh, Mayor, if you want to take it from here. Did, did you skip six? Did I skip six? Yeah, you did skip six, but. Oh, which is, which is, yeah, this item, right? So number six is the uh, uh, engineer land and infrastructure um, center invoices, which need we need to, is this on their SharePoint? Okay. Uh, item six is America's Thrift. Oh, I'm so sorry. I do have an old agenda. Okay, I'm uh, sorry. America's Thrift Stores, Ashley, yes. Or Alicia, I'm sorry. Alicia, Richie, Miss Richie I'm is sorry. here from Georgia. Ms. Chairman, members of the committee, Ms. Ritchie's here. Um, she is the one we signed the contract with. That, Ms. Ritchie, what, a year ago? Has it been that long? Where uh, she she and her firm have put American Thrift uh, trailers in all of our locations, if you recall. And they, per, they will give back, based on our contract, money based on a percentage uh, that will go to Make-A-Wish Foundation for kids in Rutherford County only. So, Mr. Chairman. The floor is yours. Mayor Ketron and Board of Commissioners, thank you for having us back and for the time to address you. And to, to give you the diversion numbers from 2021, you know, one of the things that, you know, we take pride in textile diversion, and that means clothing, household goods, shoes, that all go, you know, to assistance in all of our stores to be sold. And then each individual pound that is donated gets a five cent donation to make a wish of Middle Tennessee. And so the last time I was here, I was here with Beth Torres, CEO of make a wish. Regrettably, she could not attend tonight, but sends her regards and happy new year to each of you. And I wanted to say that in this year of diversion starting in April, the county of Rutherford has donated over $10,000. I will, <clears throat> I will have to send you an amendment for your report tomorrow because the total diverted pounds is actually 216,000 pounds, 725 which is impressive given the challenges that we have had. And we have had a few challenges. However, we are addressing them. So we have employed four new people across Middle Tennessee. And to speak to that, I'm gonna bring up the director from America's Thrift uh, for donations and logistics. His name is Reed Irvin and he's with us tonight. But also to introduce our new growth manager for the state of Tennessee, who's in the gallery with us, Mark Godwin. You could say hello. Um, he will also be a point of contact and lives here in Tennessee as a resident. So Reed, the floor is yours if you'd like to address the, the county commissioners about all of the changes that we have going on with America's Threat. Hi. 
I didn't uh, didn't realize I was going to get called up here unless I had questions, but <laughs> thank you for the time and for having us. Um, we have, over the past year, we've grown significantly. Um, we, at America's Thrift, uh, employed a group called Buxton, and Buxton um, is a consumer intelligence company, and so we are in a, gr in a growth phase with our company, um, really trying to rapidly expand. We have 24 stores across five states, and the Buxton analysis that we ran told us that uh, the biggest opportunity, the biggest white space in our footprint was in the metro Nashville market, specifically in uh, Rutherford County and Murfreesboro. So they've told us that with our expansion, um, they see that we could put upwards of 10 stores in the metro Nashville market. And so we have taken a real um, focused approach on strategically growing the market and trying to put the right people in place here. Alicia mentioned that we have had some, some different issues with service. I'm sure um, any of you all that run businesses or uh, employ people uh, can appreciate some of the challenges that we've had trying to employ um, people and keep keep um, our site staffed. So we are diligently working on that. We have hired a new leader of collections and logistics, and basically that person at America's Surf Store is in charge of every single one of our regional uh, logistics managers. We have eight of them across our five states. And so he, he I believe he was at the meeting last month. Yeah, last is that week. last week? Okay. Um, and his name is Todd Gross. He, he's local uh, to Nashville. We've also employed someone named Frank Abita. He is in, in Rutherford County. Uh, he's our logistics analyst. Uh, we hired a brand new, um, uh, what we call our area donations and logistics manager. Um, he is based out of Murfreesboro and he is starting on Monday. So, um, and then we, we moved Mark Godwin uh, up here too. So we have moved basically four managers and a leader of our entire operational footprint up into the Metro Nashville uh, Rutherford County market to really focus on the service and expansion of the logistics that we have going on up here. Um, tomorrow specifically we're conducting interviews uh, in Smyrna for some of the uh, convenience centers attendants that we have uh, with the Rutherford County recycling. So very excited about that, really excited about the future. Uh, we just finished our year and Looking, uh, looking back at the year, we grew 76% um, in Middle Tennessee in one year. 76%. Um, that's it, it, incredible. Um, you know, almost, almost doubling what we collect. And as Alicia um, alluded to, all of those collections go uh, to make a direct contribution to Make-A-Wish of Middle Tennessee. So a lot of people get uh, kind of confused or mixed up. They think that what we sell in our store somehow then goes back to contribute to the charity partners that we represent. But that is not how our uh, agreement with our charity partners works. It's uh, it's solely based on donated pounds, nothing more. So it has nothing to do with what we do in our stores. It's all about what people donate. That's why the relationship that we have uh, with uh, Rutherford County is so important to us and it's so important to make a wish. And so for that, I wanted to just thank you for the opportunity to, do, to work with you all um, and to build that uh, relationship with you all and to work here in Middle Tennessee. So um, I'm really excited about what we have going on in terms of uh, bolstering our infrastructure around logistics. Uh, we came up here and we grew really fast and now we need to come up here and support that growth uh, with a bunch of logistics moves. We're adding trucks. Uh, we are searching for a brick and mortar location uh, that we can have our own facility. Currently, we operate out of trailers that, that, um, that we rent a space and, and we load everything into trailers. So we're looking for a brick and mortar location and we're constant, we're, we're in the process right now of identifying locations where we can open a retail store. And Rutherford County, a uh, couple cities in Rutherford County are top on the list on that. So uh, very excited, um, open for questions if any of you all have questions. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, are your financials uh, a matter of public record? They are not a matter of public record. We, so, we, we're owned by private equity. Um, so I, I mean, I, go ahead. Yeah. The financials of Make-A-Wish of Middle Tennessee are a public record and, um, you know, Beth Torres independently communicates our donations. But as far as uh, <clears throat> a comparison to 
your entity and and possibly goodwill as far as where the proceeds go yep. uh, you know as far as all the a lot of the times we hear that there's uh, so-called uh, uh, entities that give back to the community uh, but there's such a high amount of profits going to administration so it's been a while since we heard your presentation and I think you addressed that at that time, but I would, I would like to hear again uh, since this partnership seems to be blossoming, if you will. I believe that asking Beth Torres to come and address the county commissioners would be beneficial so that you hear that directly from the head of Make-A-Wish of Middle Tennessee, sir. And thank you for the question. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Ghetto, yes, please. Yes, I uh, would like to ask you a question. For example, if several family come to us as we have several bags of clothing to give to, where do they have to take to? You, where to take them? Mm -hmm. um, they can be dropped off at any of the convenience centers okay. in Rutherford County. So they either have trailer sites with attendants at the, at the locations, or there are bins that they can drop off on, depending on the exact loca the the independent location. Uh, some of them are different based on volume. So the high volume centers uh, have trailers that we can drop off at, and the lower volume centers have uh, donation bins where the bags of clothing can be dropped into them. Thank you. Sure. We also have a website that advertises the partnership with Rutherford County that illustrates all of the locations. We also ran a Facebook and internet promo giving greater um, evaluation for promoing out and educating the citizens of Rutherford County to create a greater educational awareness for our partnership so that they knew where to go to divert. And that is still live and you can Google that, America's Thrift, Make-A-Wish of Middle Tennessee, Rutherford County, and it will pull up. Is Make-A-Wish the only charity y'all donate to? No, sir. Um, in each state, we have a uh, different charity partner. In the state of Tennessee, we actually have two charity partners. So Middle Tennessee has a territory, um, 12, county? 12 counties. Um, and so we only focus for Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee on those 12 counties. And we also operate in Eastern Tennessee. And we, the charity partner that we have in Eastern Tennessee is Adult and Teen Challenge. So they're basically an addiction recovery um, center. They help uh, people recovering from, you know, um, any type of addiction um, or, you know, traumatizing like life uh, event. And we've been, we've been with them for, um, at least 12 years um, in Eastern Tennessee. And so that's in our Chattanooga and Knoxville market. And we've seen such amazing growth in Middle Tennessee that we, in the past two years that we've been partnered with Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee, we're getting close to surpassing what we've done in Eastern Tennessee since we've been operating here for you know 15 years, long before I was with the company. We, we are partnered with uh, Make-A-Wish in the entire state of Alabama um, as well, because the entity, the Make-A-Wish entity in Alabama encompasses the entire state. So each chapter of Make-A-Wish um, operates independently. So a lot of people think of Make-A-Wish as this kind of big national nonprofit, and they don't realize that when you donate to a local Make-A-Wish chapter, that those funds don't go to national. They go to the chapter, and the chapter uses those funds to grant wishes for local children within their jurisdiction. It does not go to grant a wish for a kid in California or anywhere else. They stay strictly right here. And so um, th that's kind of a misconception that I like to share because I think it's important that the funds that are being generated and paid back to Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee are all going directly to children within the, that same footprint. Good to know, yes. Um, Rutherford County granted one wish with the donations that were collected in 2021. It's a little over 10,000 to grant a wish, and so you made a difference in the life of, of one child that needed a wish granted. When uh, Ms. Torres comes and explains, I'll ask her to um, also give, you know, an update on the county, what, what children are requesting a wish just in Rutherford County as well. 
Mr. Chairman, we have a commission meeting, I think, next Thursday. Uh, could we request Ms. Torres to, uh, to, to make an appearance at that time? <clears throat> Ms. Torres is a very busy woman. I would suggest a 30-day notice to get her attendance. And so if we could do that in the month of February, I believe that would give her ample time to be present. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions, gang? Congratulations for a good year. It looks like you uh, shattered your expectations, so. What? That's a whole lot of tonnage not going into the landfill. It is a whole lot of tonnage not going into the landfill. It, it's incredible. It, it really has surpassed our expectations. I mean, 76% growth in one year, and, and I would say the majority of that is coming through the partnership with Rutherford County and what you guys have done to help us grow. So extremely grateful. Thank you. It's amazing. Thank you all. All right, now we're going to number seven, which is uh, the convenience center invoices need to be updated and voted on. Mr. Chairman, uh, if if we could have Mr. Bradley uh, come up to answer any questions, I'll go ahead and set the stage. Um, I received invoices from uh, Energy Land Infrastructure, um, $12,610 for Leanna, $10,702 for Rockville, 12,475 for Walter Hill and 2,302 for weekly for a total of 38,089 uh, I received invoices on and um, uh, I believe I was out of town when the invoice I signed them sent them upstairs for payment Miss um, Nolan said that it exceeded what was originally um, uh, allocated so we need to come back through the process through this committee budget Thursday night in full commission. Um, I, Mr. Bradley, if you want to come up and, and address the, the uh, what the increase of these fees per location has been. You guys all have hard copies, right? Yeah. Right, Jay. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, so if you recall, uh, early on when we first brought the design contract to Public Works and the full commission, well, we settled on a percent of the construction cost contract uh, with the number of unknowns that we had at the time being one, uh, the Smyrna site moving, the Rockville site being split into two sides of the street. The <clears throat> actually Walter Hill site has now moved to what we're calling Landfield Road. Um, so now that we're far enough along in the process to where we have bid documents and contract documents for all four sites, uh, we, we had an updated cost estimate for each site and therefore we updated our invoicing uh, based on those the, uh, new cost estimates for the sites. So that was the increase for that. So as I stated earlier in this meeting, Mr. Chairman, we we are remodeling two facilities and we're actually m moving two facilities of the four that will be going out to um, be, uh, bids will be open on the 20th, I believe, of this month. Uh, so by, like you said, on, on Rockville, we chose to, because we needed a little bit more room to keep the current location open that's where the recyclables will go and then the other side behind the store in Rockville will be where the a lot of the open tops are so we'll have actually two facilities at that location and of course at Walter Hill we chose to remove ourselves from the uh, property that belongs to Republic and we'll be locating the new facility up on landfill road on our property and then weekly we'll be moving down to G Street um, there in Smyrna and and uh, with if you recall the deal that we cut with um, uh, the agreement that we have interlocal agreement with the city of Smyrna is that we will through property management donate uh, an acre uh, to the city of Smyrna and for that, the
the city is we have four acres at that lo current location on weekly we'll donate one acre to them for their lay down lot behind their facility on g street for their water department and then in turn for for that one acre donation uh, they will run uh, the sewer tap sewer line and easement rights through their property up to ours and then property management will probably put that on the market to sell it should sell for 700 to a million dollars which will help offset the cost of these four facilities Right. Yeah, so looking back at Lisa's email, the original, we had approved $210,000 to ELI. And because the cost of the estimates of constructing these four facilities has gone up, we now have an obligation to ELI of 300000 So what's before us now, Chairman, is to add 90,000 to the original approved fund. Is that correct? In a nutshell. Do you agree with that, Jay? Yeah. I'll make a motion to increase the contract with ELI based on 6.25% of 1.2 million per facility. All right, we have a motion and a second by Commissioner Blair. Roll call, please, Rachel. Any other comments or discussion before we do that? All right. Oh. You got an exact number of what that would be, Phil? Did you have an exact number? 90,000 in addition to the 210 we've currently approved. So it's an additional 90. Do I need to talk about where it comes from or? Yeah, we'll, we'll flush it out at budget, so. Commissioner Harris? Mr. Piercy? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Mr. Serenio? Yes. Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Chairman Cush? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Uh, so, and Jay, just to be clear, uh, I want to confirm the mayor's uh, uh, thought process. Um, there is a pre bid on the 13th. Uh, and is that a mandatory, do you know? Okay, and then uh, hard bids are due on the 20th of, of January. Okay, all right. And the pre-bid is where? Here, 205. 205, okay. Uh, the th 13th. The, the pre-bid is uh, January the 13th. Uh, do you know what time of day, Jay? Two o'clock, 2 p.m. And then bid opening is the 20th, also at two at room 205, all right. And you have approximately purchasing at two? No, I'm sorry. no purchasing four thirty. Four thirty, okay. On the twentieth. Yeah. Okay. Four four thirty purchasing committee will meet and the bids will be open at that time. Pre bids at, at two. That's correct. And, and approximately how many have pulled plans? Out. Hope, hope it comes on cheaper than ninety thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jay. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. We got that. Any other business? I do. Yes, sir. Is there any way that uh, I can request that you reach out to Republic and ask them to come to our next meeting so that we can address some situations that are going on as far as with my district? And some other districts just to get a clarification on what's going on as, as to odor and to uh, traffic in other areas that people are concerned about that have come to me and i was wondering if this committee uh not this committee but that i can request that you can reach out to them and ask them if they would come and address some of these matters i always ask um our next let's see when is our next you're talking about the one next week Oh, you're talking about our public works meeting, yeah. not full commission. No. Okay. okay. And when when they ask, you're talking. You, I can, uh, with a straight face, say citizen uh, trans complaints, transportation, citizen complaints, odor, traffic. Man, I'm not trying to beat them up. Oh, we no. need to. I mean, we need to. 
what, what their it's constituents have asked and then it's my job as their commissioner to bring this up and i think that they sh you know should let us know you know it should be something that that we should be doing all the time anyway yeah, so it shouldn't be a surprise to them i understand there's there was a few odor outbreaks not long ago that were fairly bad okay steve's going yeah <laughs> all right uh any other uh, business chanto i do have some. what about the trending tomorrow at yes did, uh, did, i think you all got an email perhaps uh, i think it was from t deck uh it was a solid waste uh workshop that is the, the Murfreesboro location, there's multiple locations. There's one in Murfreesboro tomorrow, beginning at 9 a.m. at the, what was it, Chanto? The Bishop, no. Yeah, well, I wrote it down here somewhere, what was it? Blanton Drive, 2022 Blanton Drive, uh, starts at nine o'clock. I'm not sure how long it lasts, but um, you guys remember seeing an email three or four weeks ago? Okay, for those interested, up, I guess. I don't know that you have to RSVP. Okay, and it's it's a T deck workshop workshop, and they said if you can't go in person, they're gonna uh, tape it, and you can access it later at your own leisure. So that may be the thing to do. So, uh, all right, anything else? <laughs>